I want to uh, Lord willing I want to draw our attention First Thessalonians chapter 5 <clears throat> First Thessalonians chapter 5, no strange book to you, I'm sure, <laughs> but uh, I want to say a, a word about Health is church. Amen. 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 A healthy church. The title itself suggests that there can be an unhealthy church. In fact, there are in this time, some unhealthy churches. And the evidence is that they look like a church. They call themselves church. But they are not what's described in Scripture. Many churches today look every day like it's Halloween. They're disguised. <laughs> so I want to see what, as I kind of skip and jump through the uh, fifth chapter of First Thessalonians, especially beginning at verse 12 mm -hmm. to the end of the book yeah. or in that section of scripture I'm not going to read all of it mm -hmm. to get a picture of a healthy church and we'll begin reading at verse number 12 right, right. chapter 5 mm -hmm. First Thessalonians. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love for their works sake and be at peace among yourselves. Now we exhort you, brethren, Warn them that are unruly. Comfort the feeble-minded. Support the weak. Be patient toward all men. 
See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. I think I will read it since God can talk better than I can. Rejoice. Didn't say have joy. Said rejoice. Evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything. Give thanks. I said, in everything, give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit, despise not prophesying. Prove all things, hold fast that which is good, Hallelujah. and abstain from all appearance of evil. Hallelujah. And the very God of peace, Jesus. the very yes, God of peace, yes, sanctify you wholly, and pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. Brethren, pray for us. Greet all the brethren with an holy kiss. And I charge you by the Lord that this epistle be read yes, sir. unto all the holy brethren the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Amen. A healthy church. One of the things I like about the Apostle Paul in the writing of his epistles to the churches that he served yes, sir. is that he always introduced himself and those who labored with him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He does no less in his epistles to the Thessalonians. Paul and Salvanius yes. and Timothy. Mm -hmm. Timotheus. Mm -hmm. Servants of the Lord. Yes, sir. Not of man, nor by the will of man but by the will of God. Yes. The pastor of this church since its origin is not pastor by the will of God. Jesus. Then he cannot do the work of God. But the evidence is that God has his hands on him. And as we look at Greater Love Church today, after 36 years, there's got to be some will of God in his leadership. But look who he writes to. He writes unto the church of the Thessalonians, uh -huh. listen to this strongly, which is in God. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. 
the Father, and in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. You wonder why Greater Love Church has been around for 36 years with ups and downs and ins and outs. And those who come and go, is because she exists not just in the world, but first of all, in God. Somebody need to help me right there. In, in God. And then in the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and, and I like it. I like it because it uses not just the word Lord, but the total yes, sir. Yes, sir. name of our Savior. Yes, sir. Lord, yes, sir. that's in charge. Yes, sir. Jesus, yes. that's our Savior. Uh -huh. And Christ, that's our mediator. So we are gone. But now God is our appointor. And God does not exist just in time. Help me somebody. He exists in time and in eternity. And so our appointment has an eternal tie. And nothing can separate us from the one who appointed us. Somebody help me right here. And furthermore, God's appointment is not temporary. It's not tied to time. It's tied to eternity. So that when this earthly house of a tabernacle is dissolved, my appointment does not go with time. It's tied to I'm, I'm, I'm appointed. I'm, I'm appointed through salvation of the Lord of Jesus, Jesus Christ. And before Paul would tell them all there is to know about a healthy church, he tells them first, you can't be separated from the one who appointed you. It's, it's, it's on the record everywhere all over this world. We live in a terrible time. But winds might blow and storms may rage. But when it's all over, I'll still be where I was appointed to be. That's in God and in the Lord Jesus Christ. And the church cannot be healthy unless that relationship between God, his son, and the Holy Spirit is cultivated in prayer, in Bible study, in service, and in worship. You got to be tied to God through Jesus Christ, nurtured by the Holy Spirit, guided by his word, if you're going to be healthy. If you're going to be healthy. And I need to tell you, I need to tell you, Anybody, B-O-D-Y, anybody that's not healthy can't do what a healthy body can do. Can't stand some stuff. 
that a healthy body can stand. Can, can't put up with some stuff. But when you are tied properly, huh, when you are tied properly to the body of Christ through his son, Jesus Christ, and your relationship with God is good and your prayer life is pure. That'll help you walk right. That'll help you talk right. That'll help you serve right. That'll help you love each other right. And it'll cause you to be agitated when you're not where you ought to be. Apostle Paul tells us that a healthy church is identified by how they relate to each other and how they relate to God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, let me put it bottom up. It's because your relationship to God causes you to have a healthy relationship with your fellow man. If you ain't got it right up there, If your hookup is weak, up there. If you got a missing link in the connection of your chain up there, then you're going to have bad relationships down here because I'm kept by what's up there so I can serve those down. You, you know why some of us just show up for church on Sunday and never ever look like or act like we have Christ in us on Monday through Friday, Saturday? It's because our hookup is unhealthy. It ain't good. Part of the personal experience, but it seems so good to use it. Latter part of October, I was diagnosed with cardiac arrest. Stayed in the hospital five days, and I was sick at least a month before I got to the hospital. So it took all my strength. And today I'm not physically able to move as I did the last time I was here. But in my pondering, of my current physical situation, and since this is the body, Pastor Gillespie, I begin to relate it to the church. The church is a body. She's a spiritual body. But if something ails the church, it'll slow the church down in the church's life and activity. And so Paul said, if you Thessalonians are going to be the church of a living God in the midst of a corrupt community, 
you're going to have to be healthy. Paul, when Paul, when Paul wrote this epistle, Paul wrote this epistle to the Thess Thessalonians. The gospel had just come to Europe through the Apostle Paul and his entourage. And the Bible says Paul was in Thessalonica, Thessalonica for three Sabbath days. Most of us interpret that to be three weeks. And the proclamation of the gospel, mm -hmm. Pastor Gillespie, from this great apostle, yeah. began to mess up the Thessalonians such that it was unsafe sir, sir. after three Sabbaths for him to remain there. So they sneaked him out of town That's right. That's right. at night. You know that. Yeah. 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 It was too dangerous for him to even try to leave in the daytime. He was actually carried out or escorted out at night. Right, right. But Paul has started a great work in Thessalonians. It is said at the time that Paul wrote this letter to the Thessalonians, church was new. Yeah. It existed in the midst of some 200,000 Romans, Greeks, and Jews yes, sir. with thousands of thousands, if you will, of sailors, travelers, yeah. immigrants, everybody but Christians. In the midst of that wilderness, the Apostle Paul went there under orders. Because they heard a call saying, come over in Macedonia and help us. And he knew it was a certain call from God. And so he went into Macedonia with his entourage and established in three Three weeks of preaching, three Sabbath days. Uh -huh. The church at Thessalonica. Mm -hmm. Now they're in the midst of Romans. They're in the midst of Greeks. They're in the midst of Jews and thousands of sailors. And ain't no word been there yet. Yeah. And so Paul walks in there to begin a new thing. Uh -huh. right there, and the obvious is when you go to moving and fooling around with what we are used to, you're going to get in trouble. The thing I like about the Apostle Paul is that he was used to trouble. He already knew that if you preach the gospel, stay with the word of God. Don't adhere to the culture and be different from the world. You're going to get yourself in trouble. Paul had already been in trouble. He'd been beaten. He'd been shipwrecked, so trouble was not new to him. Every child of God 
If you're part of a healthy church, you're going to end up in trouble. But I'm so glad that wherever I go, I'm led by the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, the God of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And anywhere he leads me, he will keep me. Am I right, church? Surely, if the Lord leads me there, he will keep me there until he tells me to move. So trouble was not new to the writer of this epistle. And trouble ought not be new to this church greater love. You ought to know what it means to go through darkness. You ought to know what it's like for people to call you everything but who you are. You ought to know that if you walk with Jesus, you're going to walk away from the world. But as long as I walk with Jesus, I've made a discovery. It's all right to walk away from the world because if Jesus is with me, he's more than the world against me. And if I stumble, he'll hold me. And if I fall, he'll pick me up. And if you try to block my path, if I keep on marching, he'll move you out of the way. Surely, 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 I'm in Christ. And Christ is in me. And as long as I live, there's some characteristics of what a healthy church is like. You esteem your leader highly. You exhort one another. You comfort the feeble-minded. You support the weak. You be poor patient toward all men. You don't render evil for evil. Am I right, church? But you follow that which is good. Am I right? You rejoice evermore. I said rejoice evermore. In all things, I pray without ceasing. I made a discovery in my life that if I can stay in prayer, I can stay all right. If I can stay in prayer, I can handle what you throw at me. If I stay connected to God, God will, God will. If I stay hooked up to God, God will hold me up, God will pick me up. God will. So in everything, in everything, I'm keeping you too long, but in everything, I said in everything, I give thanks. In everything, a health the church says thank you. If I'm in the valley, thank you. If I'm being talked about, thank you. If the way is rough, thank you. If I'm being called everything but a child of God, thank you. Paul said, give thanks in everything, not just when it's when it's good, but when it's bad. Not when you're up, but when you're down. Not when you're well, but when you're sick. Give thanks in everything, for this is the will of God 
I want the world to see how I act when things are not well. I want the world to see how I walk when things are not well. I want the world to see the consistency of my behavior when things are against me. If I hold out, if I hold on, if I don't give up, God will. Anybody know he will? God will. God will. God will. Fight my battle. God will. Hold my hand. God will. Heal my body. God will. Keep me in the storm. God will. Do you know he will? Won't he do it? Make a way when I don't see it. Surely. Oh, surely. I don't want to be just a church. I want to be a healthy church. When I'm healthy, it'll show up in my walk. When I'm healthy, it'll show up in my talk. When I'm healthy, it'll show up in my relationship. Am I right, church? When I'm healthy, I don't bother about the future. I spend time in the now. My future is already guaranteed. Greater love, greater love, oh, greater love. Stay healthy, keep on serving, keep on. God will, am I the only one here? God will. in 39 more years. Stay hooked up. God gave his son. So whatever happened down here, I can stay healthy. And when yes, sir. I can't stand you no more. I got a place.